All right. Hi, Alicia. I'm so glad you're taking the time today to talk to me about Trombley Gardens. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Janelle? I'm great, great. So we were just on the phone and you were in the process of cooking something. So I'd love to hear what it is you're cooking. Well, um, we try to daily make, um, when I go to the case and look at what people want to grab, it's like, okay, what do I have to grab and go for dinners? What do I have to grab and go for side? What do I have to grab and go for baked goods or grab and go for, you know, quiche, um, pasta salads when, when, you know, in the winter soup season, um, yes. you know, it just, it's ever changing or pot pie season, which is insane. Um, <laughs> your pot pie is delicious. I've had it many times. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep up. Um, <laughs> So I'm really just trying to, it's comfort food. You know, we want people to just kind of grab, um, you know, that fits their family when they don't have time to do it themselves. Um, yeah. You know, and it's just, I've, you know, just continue to try to think of some fun ideas, but keeping the comfort in it. Healthy, yeah. comfort, you know, trying to find the balance. Yeah, one of the things that we had talked about is that just knowing all the ingredients that go into your home cooked food, which is so nice, like, you know, that I know as one of your customers, um, I frequent your farm often that I know when I'm eating your food, I know all of the ingredients that are going into it are, um, you know, I can, I can identify them. And so it just makes me feel really confident about feeding my family what it is you have to offer. So thank you very much for your hard work. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's, it's, it's nice to hear. <laughs> well, another thing though, so one of the other things, it's not as healthy, but is your ice cream. So your ice cream is homemade. Um, yep. My favorite is the salted pretzel and caramel that you recently added. I feel like last year it was like brand new to your menu. Um, and uh, I always get it. And then we go and walk around the farm. And my son loves talking to Daisy, your donkey, and your wildly loud peacock. So, <laughs> so tell me about the ice cream experience. Like, so do you make it in-house? Is it? Um... We we don't, unfortunately. Um, we did add on to the kitchen and the goal was to have it made in the far corner where the um, uh, porch is, where you, there's a window so kids could watch. Mm -hmm. But we outgrew the kitchen the second we built on, which, not you know, a bad problem. not a bad problem. And it's a wonderful kitchen to work in. Um, so we, we don't have it quite yet. No, um, I don't know if we'll ever have the room for it because we could now use more retail space. So yeah. it's always a problem, but it's okay. Um, our ice cream is definitely um, something we take very, you know, pr pr we're very proud of the ice cream and the quality of the ice cream and our flavors, cho our flavor choice. Um, very proud that we ha we do have like an all allergen free one, you know, for those people that really um, have a tough time finding a facility that's peanut free. You know, we are a peanut free, free facility because yeah. Sean's um, Seth um, has a peanut allergy, so we don't cook with it. We don't do any ice cream with it. Um, so that's, you know, very important when people find that they're like, oh, wow, what a trombley. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you know, order with confidence. Yes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, for our to go food and um, our ice cream, you know, and our cookies or baked goods, mm -hmm. you know, it's really, um, you know, very important to people, especially with the allergies these days. Yes. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. important to be mindful of that. And then also knowing that all of your home cooked food is also made in a kitchen that's peanut free. That's not right. something that a lot of people know. So that's right. something that's important. I'm glad you said that. And so, okay. So what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Um, I share the say, I share the favorite one that you do. Salted caramel pretzel. I am not a big um, ice cream eater just because of my intolerance. Yeah. But when I do decide, that's my go-to. The salted <laughs> caramel pretzel, I absolutely love. And we that's really becoming one of our biggest movers. Like that yeah. and the blueberry crumble. Ooh, um, I'll have to try that. Huge, huge movers. I mean, people are asking us to, you know, um, pack a court for them to take home, you know, because it's just. I've done <laughs> that. Yes. I send my husband down to your garden, you know, because we live right up the road. And I say, just ask them to put it in a court for me, you know, so I can yep. have it at home. But and so um, another thing that I really want to talk about is your CSA. So that's something that we use and uh, my, my family and I and every Saturday we go there and we select from your like large display, it's like your own personal farmer's market. And we get to pick from what it is that you have available based on the tier that we chose. And it's amazing. Like it, it, it forces us to eat, um, you know, to be more creative because we get things that like 
you know, farro. Like I had never cooked with farro before, you know, and turnips. Boy, do I know how to cook with turnips now, you know? So <laughs> so I'd love for you to talk about the CSA because I know it's something that's uh, really important to my family. It, and it's really important to the farm. You know, CSA is a community supported agriculture, you know, so a, a traditional farm um, in the winter, they don't have any income. They're not growing anything. So there's nothing that is bringing in, um, you know, a flow of cash to be able to fix tractors, get their seed in, get their soil in, to start planting for the spring summer season. And so what this uh, what this program is, it's um, you know really how it should be utilized is you buy into the farm in the winter, and as you said, you pick a tier. Um, are you a mini? Are you a standard? Are you a family size? Like how much veggie do you eat? And then, you know, you buy it, you know, December, January, February, and then come harvest season, which as you know, we're going into um, now our third week. Um, you know, we then give back to you of our, the veggies that we're growing for, you know, your share. Mm -hmm. um, and then you come weekly and um, a traditional CSA is you usually just pick up a box. Um, we've really kind of created it more of an outing, a family outing, come get your kids involved, come grab a veggie shop while you're here, you know, um, because we also have a store. We're not a traditional farm at this point, you know, when we're just growing veggies. Um, but then as we have it like a shopping style, you've got more choice. Um, if you're a family that just doesn't eat kale, you know, you can just skip it. But, um, or if your family's allergic to onions, you know, you don't have to take them. Um, but what we've also created is um, at the end of gathering all your um, this week's produce, you can either, we have a swap of veggie basket. So if you know you want to make zucchini bread and you've got a summer squash and a zucchini, but you want two zucchinis, swap out your summer squash. Yeah. And, or you are the household that doesn't like kale or allergic to onions. We have a share um, container where at, at the end of each week, um, we have a basket that goes to our local food bank share that we try to donate um, what our CSA customers didn't take. Um, Which I love about uh, what your garden does, what your farm does, is that you're not trying to then resell the produce that has already been purchased. Instead, you're giving it back to the community. And SHARE does such an amazing job taking yeah. care of our yes, local neighborhoods. And that your giving is that's, you know, it's just contributing to helping the greater good. So I love that you don't then try to take that kale or those onions or whatever right. else is in that basket and then put it on your shelves to sell, you yeah. know, throughout the week. So that's A plus to you for doing that. Well, yeah, we pay it forward. You know, we really do try to help where we can. Um, and then also in the CSA, you know, if, as you've learned by, you know, this is your second year in the CSA, that when it comes to the heavy harvest season, it, you know, all of a sudden, instead of getting two zucchini and an onion, it's take some. What will your household like a handful? <laughs> right. You know, pay it forward. Give it to a neighbor. Give it to a stranger. Share. Uh, you know, if we're having a great summer and a great crop season, then we want to share it. Yeah, that's amazing. Now, uh, one of the things that I love, I read on your website is that like, so we can add on to our, our CSA tiers. And so one of the things is, and you talk about on your website that you'll do your best to provide the fruit that you grow, but if there are any gaps or anything, you work with other local farms. And so I just wanted to ask like, what is that dynamic like working with the other farms in your community? Um, is it, does it feel good to support them and know that they're supporting you too? Oh, thousand percent. Yeah. One thousand percent. We wouldn't be here without them yeah. and vice versa. And if there's something that we do that they don't, then, you know, here, you know, please, you know, if you want it to be part of your farm, okay. And vice versa. So, you know, for instance, you know, we have, um, well, we did have our own strawberry field, but unfortunately we lost that last year to the rain, but we will have it again. But Brookdale and Hollis totally helped us out with, you know, the strawberries for our fruit share, um, which as you can, as you know, we're going into the berry season. So we, strawberry season's over, now we're in the raspberry, blueberry season uh, and cherry season. Now we don't have fruit trees. So, you know, Brookdale provides us with the cherries. We do have our own blueberries and our own raspberries. So we can provide that piece of it. 
um, we don't have peaches or apple trees. So Brookdale, you know, and Hollis help, you know, they provide us for that type of fruit, but come melon season, you know, when we, we can do our own melon and cantaloupe and all of that, we can provide that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really a back and forth on, you know, we can only grow so much on our farm um, and the same for other farms. And, 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 you know, we just completely support one another if we can. Um, one hand washes the other. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if somebody has a, something, you know, catastrophic, you know, you want that help yeah. and you want that help where um, it's coming from a community that understands the need and yeah. what and how quickly it can happen and what Mother Nature really can do to us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. There are some things just like you said, the rain last year was so intense here on North River Road. I can only mm-hmm. imagine it must have been like a devastating field to lose your strawberry fields because the river really did blood you know but now like being resilient is part of being a farmer i'm sure you know you just kind of take what comes and work with it these boys that are out there they work hard each and every day to you know just um you know and 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 just balancing what they can control and what they can't right yeah so um like i said i live on this road so i'm constantly driving by you're always having events i know soon you have a lobster event coming up and it's it's, it says something along the lines come jump on our cow train get a hay ride get some ice cream so what is a cow train what is your lobster festival (laughs) so this will be our second annual lobster festival last year it was a huge success um, we had Nikki James, who was a steel drum band. So it plays like island music and everybody loved it. Yeah. Um, and we got people ordered either lobster rolls or whole, whole lobsters. You know, we did have hot dogs and cheeseburgers for those that didn't want um, lobster. Um, we had our own french fries and, you know, our own sides um, that we grew that we could, you know, put into it. And then um, for the kids, you know, we have the, a cow train that we have that is just pulled by a lawnmower that they can jump on and like get a ride around the farm and, you know, give the parents maybe, you know, 10, 15 minutes of, you know, their kids away and, you know, we'll entertain them and they can come see the farm and then come back and then the hay ride to um, get that out. And, you know, adults want to jump on that with their kids, they can. And it's just kind of a way just to, you know, come and see the fields, you yeah. know, check out, you know, kind of a little bit away from the farm, um, just kind of show what what we do because you know there's so many aspects you know there's the hay field there's the veggie field there's the corn maze you know there's going to be the pumpkin field um there are your baby goats <laughs> yeah, there's the troublemakers you know yes, right. <laughs> they're the best <laughs> <laughs> and so in the in uh during halloween i love talking about like you have some kind of spooky lit up trail through the woods on the back side of your one of your fields and then sometimes, like closest to Halloween, the the parking lot is packed with people. So what is that? What is your spooky? So that um, is, you know, our, the haunted woods. Um, Chad Zingalis, you know, he has created that space and has taken on this entire canvas to make it, you know, just this haunted trail. So they have real actors out there, do, you know, playing out their character, you know, on select nights in October. Um, you know, and, and, and people love it. People love it. We yeah. <laughs> keep the stand open late. We have a band here playing. We have vampires outside while you're waiting in line, food, ice cream, you know, and then, you know, people go through it and, you know, Chad does an amazing job and each year it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So, yeah. you know, we keep trying to find ideas on how to entertain the line. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> <That's great>. right. <laughs> um, but it's really in this past year is the first year that we actually then turned it into a Christmas, um, like a light show um, yeah, on select nights uh, that, that, you know, we got some great feedback, um, you know, and then that was a lot of fun to watch grow, too. Yeah. Um, so just trying to utilize different pieces of the, of the land that's just not traditional farming. Sure. Yeah, it's a good way to it's smart too because it's a good way to welcome people to your space and then show them what you're about and then you know then they get to go into your store and buy your ice cream or your baked goods my favorite are you have some dill onion rolls that you sell in a bag oh my gosh that warmed up with like a whole stick of butter i could eat the whole bag in one sitting so i think it's necessary to mention those in our in our podcast that's a tough one when they come out there's a whole tray of them i'm like really yeah I'll just eat one. So, <laughs> so um, you do have a Young Professionals Network event coming up on July 9th. So what is it that they can expect? So uh, what what will, uh, like, how will you host that event? 
so um, I was actually just talking with Sue, our baker, on, you know, just food. Um, and then I know that they're going to be up at the tent, um, a nice, you know, spot to really, like, look out over the farm. Um, and then I've never been part of one of these, so as far as, like, you know, I know that uh, I was welcome to, like, speak up about the farm there, kind of just introduce our business. Um, but certainly, hopefully we'll, you know, provide them with a taste of Trombley's, you know, while they're here. Um, they're certainly welcome to walk around in the store, um, around the animals. You know, there's trails around the farm if it's a nice evening and they just want to go check out the rest of the, the land if they feel like an evening walk. Um, but like I said, they can enjoy an ice cream. They can come in if, you know, they want to check out the savory stuff or the baked goods stuff, um, the produce that's coming out of our fields right now. You know, they're certainly welcome to kind of, you know, really after the meeting gets done, you know, come check out Trombley Gardens at your own pace. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, I know that the Young Professionals Network is also like they're really big into, um, you know, supporting local community, um, like small businesses and fundraising for nonprofits and stuff like that. So I know that this you hosting that event is going to make a big difference for them. It's going to be in their mind for a later event, perhaps, you know, so uh, because you support the community and that's exactly what they do as well. Right. There's it's right. a chamber and a, a select committee that work together. So um, my, my last question for you, Alicia, is I just want to ask, where can people find you? <laughs> um, <laughs> In the kitchen. <laughs> well, let me see. Where was I last week? Last week, I'd be out with the animals in the kitchen, out with CSA, in the barn. Um, I don't know. Just, I'm everywhere. You're I'm everywhere. everywhere. What, is the you best, know, and, uh, what is the best uh, like uh, phone number for people to call, or if they wanted to order something, could they do it online? What is your website? Anytime. Anytime. Um, call me anytime at six zero three six seven three zero six four seven. That's the stands number. I'm more than happy uh, to stop what I'm doing to take a phone call and or leave a message. I'll call you back. Um, stop by the stand. If they can find me, I can, you know, more than happy to stop and have a conversation. Um, but definitely don't place orders online. That's that's don't place orders online. OK, you know, call it in because <laughs> that, that way we know and we can ask the questions we need to and make sure we get it right. Person to person. Yep, <laughs> That's right. Alicia, thank you so much for taking the time today. I really appreciate it. And uh, and I look forward to going down and getting some ice cream very soon. <laughs> yes, we'll have to have ice cream together and share our favorite flavor. We can sit in your rocking chairs on your porch. It would be nice. Yes. <laughs> that would be perfect. All right, take care, Alicia. Bye-bye. <laughs>